Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I've been scratch building a large low relief hotel based on the Midland Hotel in Bradford. No ground is flat in Chandwell and here the hotel is built into a rise above the station platforms. So in part 8 of the series I'm going to show you how I scratch built this dingy graffiti covered retaining wall for the bottom of the hotel. Let's take a look at part 8 then. Scratch building a graffiti covered retaining wall. Because my whole hotel building is planned out in Inkscape, I know exactly the height and length that the wall needs to be. This section will fit between the ballroom and the concourse entrance building. I draw an arch to about the right proportion and duplicate it so that I have six of them. I draw a rectangle, again just roughly, to represent the buttresses. The wall will look best if there is an equal gap between each of these components. To achieve this, I draw rectangles at the outer edges of the base wall. I then use the Make Horizontal Gaps Between Objects Equal button to spread them out nicely. I now have the design of the wall. I can now use the path tools to separate them into individual components. Love it or hate it, Chandwell is exactly the sort of place that will be covered in graffiti in the 1990s. Local scoundrel Scotty has been out, as has new boy Sheedy whoever he is. My friend Tim is a fellow Engage modeler and he makes the most spectacular teeny tiny models out of card and paper. He has made buses, vans, telephone boxes and even a duck for his layout. What he attempts in card is absolutely bananas, so this graffiti is my tribute to Tim and his bonkers creations. I drew the banana freehand using the calligraphic or brush strokes tool. You can set this up to vary the width of stroke either based on how fast you move your mouse or depending on the tone of the colour you're drawing over. I used a black to white graduated oval underneath the banana as I drew it, so that it looks like the lines are varying width. I used simple shapes under the lines to represent the colours. To make it look like spray paint, I adjusted the blur of the shape to make it fuzzy around the edges. I then dropped it on top of the texture, adjusted its blend mode to overlay and reduced its opacity a little bit to make it look like it has been sprayed onto the stonework. Finished off the entire wall with a semi-transparent, transparent to black rectangle to make it look dirtier towards the bottom. Because my wall comprises a base layer, an arch layer and the buttresses, I needed to take extra care to get the graffiti all lining up. I exported the completed wall as an individual image and I arranged the outlines of the components on top. I then duplicated this three times and deleted the unwanted components from each copy. This left me with all of the components with the graffiti in exactly the right place. I widened the buttresses to enable me to wrap the graffiti texture around them to make it look like the paint has been sprayed right across them. I drew some supports with a 6 degree slope for the batter of the wall. Once printed and cut out, I was left with a kit of parts that only needed assembling. I used PVA to apply the arch cover to the arch base. I roughly cut out the interior of the arch, tightly wrapped the edges around the base, and then I cut 20 or so slices in the curved bit and wrapped those around the underside of the arch. Take care to get the wrap smooth and the arch nice and tight. I was really pleased that the graffiti looked like it was all going to line up. It was then just a case of sticking it to the base. The buttresses are just five rectangles of card stuck on top of each other. Once the glue is firmly set, I use a cheap nail file to sand the edges where I've not quite managed to get a seamless stack. Because the wrap layers are wider than the buttress, I had to be sure that I had the correct part of the graffiti on the front face. I printed scoring marks and made sure to score and fold them before cutting out. It was then just a case of dropping the buttress into the folded trough and wrapping the texture right round. I used a scale model scenery right angle jig to line up the completed wall section with its buttress and then, using PVA glue, joined the two together. I used the tips of my tweezers to scrape away any glue that has oozed out of the join. I was pleased that the graffiti looked like it was all going to align. With the almost complete wall temporarily in place, it was the moment of truth for my measuring. Would the last piece fit in the gap? Thankfully, it dropped in with absolute perfection. This was not measured. It's all down to taking the time during the design stage to be sure that the drawings in Inkscape were accurate. This fits thanks to the hours I spent two months ago before I'd printed a single sheet. 
I finally used PVA to attach the wall to the bottom of the hotel. I used offcuts and scraps as little strengthening ribs and I used strips of paper to help hold those ribs in place. There is still one more layer of building to go on, but now I've seen the retaining wall in place, I decided that an alleyway to the other side of the hotel would work really well here. It was time to perform surgery on the hotel. I had several layers of the building to get through. I simply stabbed it and hacked it with my scalpel. Brute force and ignorance got me through the three layers of card and the assorted supports. I got through it in the end and I'm now left with a hole which will be filled in and detailed in an upcoming video. I made a template ground surface out of two layers of half millimeter card. I covered this in tarmac texture and I glued it into place with a slight overhang. I wrapped stone texture around the overhang. I used rectangles of card wrapped in texture for the parapet walls and then little square caps for the tops of the buttresses. I used AK Interactive Matte Varnish to give the whole component a first coat to protect it from any glue based mishaps in later build stages. Once the hotel is finished, the whole building will get one more coat of this and then two coats of AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish. Because the base of the wall will have ballast applied along it, with all of the water involved in that, I took care to varnish the ends of the card along the bottom. I will do this six or seven times to be sure that the card will not warp or expand when the time for ballasting comes. Please click the thumbs up button if you're finding these videos interesting as this does encourage me to keep making them. This returning wall was a comparatively quick build, taking only 7.5 hours from blank sheet of paper through to final coat of varnish. The wall took one sheet of A4 label, one sheet of photo paper and one sheet of half millimetre card. This took the overall cost of the hotel to £6.06 and, and the effort is now up at 91 and 3 quarter hours. I'll be adding the terrace next, detailing the new alleyway and finally giving these doors some ground to give out onto. So until then, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.